Hi. So today I'm going to take you on a full farm tour. So we're going to take you over and show you the goats. We're going to take you up and down through my uh, my fruit fruit path and uh, show you as aisle six and how things are growing. So let's take you there and let's get started. Okay, so let's go for this tour. I've uh, made up some uh, banana tea or whatever they call that because I hear it's uh, works pretty good. So. We're gonna go and put that on a couple of my one of some of my wheat plants, but let's go on this tour first. Okay, so you know I'm gonna be passing my war room here, and I'll be uh, making a video of that soon enough. Uh, I got a war room up in my loft there, and uh, yeah, I use it for all my planting and camping out, so I can come up here on the weekends. Um, the first thing we have here is our. This is our wild raspberry that grows against here. It's a little overgrown and it's finished for the year, but mom likes it, so we're keeping it. Um, I'll probably come in here and do a little trim in the fall and get rid of most of this. And then we have our future pond, hopefully, and our road, which got washed out a little bit, but it's fine now. So here, here we got all the goats and we got two new cows and uh, we'll come back and get some footage of that and I'll show you the two girls or go girl and boy I can't remember which one and uh, Gracie's over there saying hello so this is just uh, we turned into another little paddock because you know free grass free food for the goats and here we're coming up on aisle six on my right and uh, my watering uh, utility trailer here uh, I haven't had to use it in a little bit there's been so much rain and uh, we come over here to this side, which I haven't worked on a lot. I've done some work, but not enough. Uh, eventually, we'll be making the road bigger and uh, cleaning a lot of this up. But this is all aisle six. And there's a shagbark hickory, which is just fully loaded right now with uh, hickory nuts. Let me just zoom in on that. There we are. And they're just walloping over there. Alright, let's continue. I got one right next to it too that's also weighing down these branches so much. You can see all these hickory nuts. And they're getting to the right size too, so I would assume they're really close to being ready. Maybe a couple of weeks, I don't know. I don't know a lot about hickories. And then we got this pear tree, which is basically on my neighbor's property here. But it is just packed with pears. Just packed. They're everywhere on here. Look at these things. Oh my goodness. And it's a different type of pear, that's for sure. They're definitely growing more like an apple than an, than an actual pear. So we'll see how they come out. I can't wait to try one, actually. I almost forgot this was even here. So zoom back out again so we got my fruit trees here and down here was my apricots and they're they're living out of the 18 that I had I have six survivors there's my uh, peach which survived it's getting some good growth on it thank God this year and this one here got a little too much water. From what I understand, the water is causing some of these red spots. It's just not, um, it's not draining properly. Oh, there's the goats. There's the goats. And the goat barn over there. We'll get a little closer when we come back. And then my nectarines here, which were also struggling like the peach. But uh, they're doing okay now. They had some of the curl in them. I cut it all out and, and it basically just went away. And then I got this, another hickory over here and it is fully loaded this tree too. We got a lot of hickories this year. Uh, I did a lot of trimming last year. And we're coming up on my sawmill. So here's some of my wood stash. 
in aisle six, but it's closer to my mill. There's Arrow, my little buddy, boy of the month. And then my Norwood. And then we come to the end of the goat paddock. Got some of my stash here. It's got some walnut slabs, live edge, and pine, and some cherry. And then over here, I know it's all overgrown right now, but it has not been back here yet. Um, but here's my sawmill. And someday we'll get a roof on the sucker. And that's a oak tree, shades it really nicely. And then coming up to on my pear tree. This is my corner pear tree at the end of aisle six, just after the mill. So it's not uh, overly grown with pears, but they're turning red. So it looks like I got some type of red pear in here, which is pretty cool. Um, again, I didn't even notice it was here until I started cutting away all the, all the brush. But yeah, there's, uh, there's tons. Tons of pears in there. You can see. So, we got this pear on the other side. So, on the other side of this pear, where this is parked, it's only temporary. That's where my road will continue um, on the same side as aisle six, but then the road will be closer to the road or to the uh, to my neighbor's property, which is the fence line. And uh, you can see it's way overgrown. I haven't got back to here yet because I've been so busy putting in trees and digging ponds and, and, and everything else. So yeah, over here in the tree line, this is where I put my butternuts. So looks like it's having a, a, some trouble, um, some going there. That's that right there is my butternut and then I got another one down here Whoop. doing a little trip in here so you can see that's my other one my butternut and then beside it has another shag bark hickory and then there's another nut tree now I haven't identified this tree yet but it might be a beech nut maybe there's the bark on it so if anybody knows by all means give me a, throw it in the comments for me but yeah it's it's loaded with nuts too but I don't know what they are okay well yeah I got uh, signs of turkey here definitely I've seen a couple of them around so there's definitely some turkey over here but better watch out for the dogs because I think their favorite meal is turkey so this right here, this is all the dirt that I moved out of here. And I'm gonna rent uh, a piece of equipment to uh, move it. So it might be this weekend or next weekend, most likely, or the weekend after. But yeah, all of this will get moved out and I'll flatten this back out so it's the same contour as it used to be. So yeah, once you get there, I can't wait to get the, the contours in so that the puddling or the pooling doesn't happen up here. It just keeps going into the pond. So if you're gonna come with me, show you the pond now that we're in here and you can see it's actually looking good we're getting some water in there come on angel out of there come on come on come on <laughs> she loves her pond I guess but I guess you'll have to come up this way uh, I let I left this burn I left this right here it's about a three three to four feet wide because obviously I can't dump all of this water into this pond. So when this pond gets filled, I'll come back in here and I'll reach and uh, dig this out and break it. It doesn't have to be the same depth, but uh, I definitely want it to uh, at, allow the water to go from side to side. So it really doesn't have to be as deep. It just needs to flow the water. So you can see the water level is pretty, pretty high still. It's come down just a little bit. Uh, we're getting plenty of rain. And I've got plenty of lilies and hyacinth. If you want to take a shot of that right there, how many hyacinths. I started off with six, and now I have about 16. And then in front of that over there, iris and bulrushes are taking off nicely. 
and the rest of it's just growing the way it wants to grow until I get in here to, to uh, manage some of these weeds and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's uh, good there. Come on, let's go this way. Okay, so this, these are the two pawpaws I picked up from a, a guy out in um, uh, Carlisle or something like that. Uh, I got them fairly cheap, but one died, but the other one's still going. He's struggling a little bit, but it, it's still going. Um, I got my apples still doing really well. These are the ones I put in. This is a yellow, yellow delicious. Um, she's doing really nice. She's curling a little bit, but she's all right. Um, and then I, I'm, I'm struggling on this bush here. I'm hoping she's gonna make it. I can't remember what this was. I'm pretty sure this is the Saskatoon berry or Josta berry. I can't remember which of uh, the two, but uh, what do we got here? Got a little bit of growth there, but I'm getting some dryness too. So it really hasn't set in its dirt right. Uh, but you know what, since I have some of this uh, banana juice, let's give her a little boost to see what happens. You know, maybe she just needs a little food. Um, not much for doing this, but um, we're going to try it since I've seen such good results on other people's uh, gardens. Um, again, we have this bed here that I set and it's basically just set. It has a lot of manure in it, so I'm going to allow that to just compost throughout the, throughout, uh, the year and then next year I'll plant in here. Um, on this side here I have my gooseberry, which is still doing pretty well. I had to put it up in here because it was falling over too much. Uh, I stabbed myself a thousand times to, to do that, so it owes me. Um, I think this is uh, one of my blackberries right here, which seems to be doing quite well. I got some new, I got some ladybugs in there. That's good. I like ladybugs. And my red delicious right here is still doing just as good as the yellow one. Um, so those mounds are set. Now they are staked. I don't, like I said before, I'm not big into staking, but I really want my trees to grow fairly straight. Um, so if I have to train them a little bit until I can take it out, I know it's not really natural, but it's important to me to make sure they kind of grow straight. I don't want them on angles and stuff. It'll make it harder for me to work with. Um, so what do I got here? Uh, I believe this is a blueberry. Or is that my blueberry? I think that's my, that's a blueberry. And this is a type of blackberry. So I think one of those over here, I think this is this was my Josta berry. I can't remember which. If you know, just put it in the comments. Um, we'll look at my, my grape trellis here that I built in one of my other videos. Um, so right along here, and I know I come in here and I kind of push it out, but you can't see it. These are my main strawberries right in here. Um, I grew them right into the ground with seed and uh, you can see I got to come in here and just kind of clean it out a little bit and until I can get some time and a little bit of money to uh, get some wood chips or you know just mostly time but I'll get there I'll get there so I'll come back and I'll, I'll clean this up today and uh, kind of save whatever's there I think it only goes to about here and then I'll have to replant next year reseed um, my grapes are well they're doing okay I'm getting a little bit of growth now um, they're not long enough, they're not growing fast enough to really kind of get them up here in some cases. This is one of my seedless. I can't remember if it's the red or the, or the dark. This is my other seedless. Um, she's doing okay. Again, get some, some bad leaves there. We'll just have to let it go and see what happens, you know. Keep, I'm just going to keep weaving it until it gets to the top. Um, this is one of my, my earliest ones that I put in, which is actually doing quite well. It's grown that much this summer so um, got it nice in there I got a couple branches in that's good too and I have a couple of wild strawberries up in here if you look way down in here this is one of those ones I transplanted right here uh, I don't know what if that oh look it's not even oh okay it's got a shoot on it it's shooting as you can see it's it's attached to this plant there it is there she is see that one right there it shot out another one over to here, so and it started to try to root itself, which is great. That's what I want. And then there's another one in here somewhere too, but again, it's hard to keep track, but I have wild strawberries throughout this whole uh, plot everywhere. Um, so if you want to look behind us here, and we got our hazelnut tree, or bush, and it's doing quite well, quite well where I put it. It's right next to the swale, which is just, uh, just a little bit away from the pond. 
even Errol's going for a swim down there. So again, I got to move some. Some of this is good dirt. This is the top soil. And then, then there's the clay. So I'll use that top soil to help finish this mound right here. Because I do want this to berm right in here. Okay. And uh, then I got, I believe this is, uh, this, is my green, this is my Granny Smith I put in here. Um, and she looks like she's doing okay. So far so good. Still getting nice shoots out of it. And then I got my other hazelnut. And then I'll find another tree that goes here. Most likely, uh, uh, I think uh, probably a plum or a cherry will go here. And if I could get a persimmon, because that's one of my next things that I'm going to get is a persimmon. So persimmon and hascap are my last two major uh, buys. And I have, I just ordered about 14 different types of hascaps uh, from the University of Saskatchewan. And I had to sign an agreement to get them that I wouldn't propagate them, which is fine because I can always get has caps from somewhere else and then propagate those ones. So yeah, that'll be fine. And then I have my uh, one of my one of my first apples that I put in that I bought and put in. And I forget if this is the Mitsu. Uh, no, yeah, this is the Mutsu Mutsu apple. So it should come out like a greenish yellow apple. Um, I can't wait to try that. They'll be delicious. Over here, see now we're on the left side of the of the plot of the food forest, and we have oh wow she's doing she's doing really well. I'm gonna I'm gonna give her just a little drink too because I think she deserves it. Yeah, we'll just give her some of that. What, is, uh, what did Emerald say? Bam! So yeah, this is what nectarine, and I really like nectarines over peaches because I don't like the fuzz. Some people do, um, but I think the peaches will be more peeled and canned than uh, eating fresh for me anyways but they're doing well i'm getting lots of good growth on there it's got lots of water um, this is my cherry now this is the one i was having trouble with so i i specifically made this for this cherry um, because i really want to give her a dose and i want her to live i have a hard time with the cherries um, they're pretty sensitive but yeah let's hope that's uh, enough and i'll i'll redo that i'll fill this back up let it sit for a day and a half or so and I'll do that again on Monday and I'll find, you know, certain ones that need more than others. Uh, I've got my plum here. And I haven't finished this bed yet. Obviously, you can see as I go in all my videos, I'm adding. So it's going to be tree bush, tree bush, tree bush. And then in between, I'll find stuff to grow, uh, whether it be a line of strawberries, if I want to add raspberries in between, or uh, walking onions, uh, Egyptian walking onions. Uh, you name it, I'll, I'll be in there to do it. 